Welcome to How to Become a Production SQL Database Administrator. My name is Raphael. In the next several videos now, we're going to be devoting into uh, SQL Server monitoring and the tools that come with the SQL Server that allows, allows us to monitor the SQL environment. Now, as a DBA, it's very important that we be proactively monitoring the SQL so there are no surprises. And these are some of the tools that we're going to be utilizing that help us in making that determination. One is uh, quickly the Windows Task Manager. Now, obviously, this is not strictly related to SQL Server, but it'll give you a quick snapshot as we'll see if there's any processes they're running that we can kind of terminate. The SQL Server Monitor is uh, another tool that for SQL, and I'll be going over that in this video. And then we're going to follow other several videos on SQL Performance Monitor, which is the main monitoring tool for SQL Server. And then we're also going to be looking at database management views. These are scripts that are run against the uh, uh, SQL server and provide us a tremendous amount of information. And then we'll be utilizing and I'll be showing you uh, various scripts that are, are, are needed for the DBA. We'll also be covering a few store procedures. And then we'll revisit SQL server and see how that ties into the SQL performance monitor where you can grab a trace and a performance monitoring graph and tie them together to get a visual representation of what's going on for SQL activity. And I'll be demonstrating that to you also. This uh, video primarily is going to be uh, associated with a, a activity monitor in SQL Server. But before I do that, let me just quickly look at the task manager. Uh, if you want to access the task manager, right click task manager. Now, while, as I said, this is not strictly associated with SQL, it will show you some of the uh, processes that are going on. And if you see any spikes here uh, in terms of CPU utilization or memory utilization and disk and so on, then you can certainly kill the processor here. Right now, I do have SQL going, so you can see that here. If I wanted to terminate that process, all I would do is go right click and end task. So that's a quick way of uh, ending a task if it's uh, hogging some of the resources. Uh, performance, you can graphically look at the CPU utilization, memory, disk, and so on. And again, this is a great representation of a quick snapshot of what's going on on your server. Uh, the primary reason that if I do use it is just to look at the services that are running. And if I want to kill a service, for example, right here, I can right click and you can I can start service or end a service here. But again, the, most DBS certainly don't use this, but just uh, so you're aware that it does exist if you want a quick snapshot. The quick snapshot that most DBAs do use, and that this is going to be, a video is going to be dedicated to that, is the activity monitor in SQL. So before I start looking at it, let me show you how to, uh, what it looks like and how to access it. To uh, access the activity monitor in SQL, go to your SQL Server Management Studio, right click the server, and you'll see activity monitor. And now quickly, a quick visual representation. We have four graphs, the processor time, waiting tax time, database uh, input, output, output, and batch requests. And then you have these four panes, processes, resource weights, database file, input, output, and recent expensive queries. And as you, and then you can expand these and collapse them to give you a little more detailed information about this category. And I'll be going over that in a second. So let's go back to our notes. So now that you can visually see what it can look like. A couple of things I want you to know, you'll see that if I right click on any of the graphs, you'll see the refresh interval is set to five. By default, actually it's set, set to 10 and I've did it five. But if you want to look at uh, graphically a little more real time, then you can certainly change it to one. Obviously, there's not tremendous activity going on here right now. So one is going to, obviously, we're going to see some activity since I've uh, changed the refresh rate. But generally, again, just to note, it is 10. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave it at 5. Now, one of the things that obviously the thing is that this, it, this utility itself, this tool itself, does take some resources. So you want to be some judicious in using this. It's ironic that you're utilizing a tool to find out performance issues, and then this can cause a performance issue on a uh, production environment. So just be careful with this when you're using it. Uh, so let's go back to our notes, and now that you can visually see what the active monitor looks like and how to start it. So the primary function, so why do you use it? So the primary function of the activity monitor is allow the DBA to quickly view any potential performance issues in the server side, network, or the database. 
And if any of these contentions are occurring between what's called the SPIDs or the server uh, processor ID, then this is where you can kill that process and uh, uh, allow, allow the process to uh, terminate. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so continuing, viewing the activity monitor dashboard, you'll notice four graphs, as I mentioned, that help identify any uh, abnormal activity. So if you go back here and if you're seeing a lot of plateau, uh, plateaus of these graphs, then it's a concern. A very spike, even 80 or 90% or 100% on any of these, uh, well, certainly in the processor time, is not a caution for uh, a processor time activity going on. It's when it plateaus 80, 85% is that we need to be certainly a concern for and prevent that. And I'll show you those in a second in detail. And so let's continue that. And as I said, I've spoken about the refresh rate that you can change it. This is what it looks like. So now let's look at some of the processor time waiting tasks and database up and what they kind of mean specifically. So the processor time, which is this right here. So that the processor time actually it gives us information of what processes are running and what resources are being utilized. And obviously a greater utilization of processor time means that a tremendous amount of a, um, utilization of the CPU uh, is being used. So if this is peaking anywhere near 75, 80% or higher, then it's a concern that uh, we have either a bottleneck or a tremendous amount, somebody's causing uh, a, a, the utilization of CPU at a tremendous rate and we need to fix that and address that. So that's what that uh, address shows. Um, other thing is the waiting tasks. The number of tasks that are waiting for the processor, I.O., or memory resources. The resource wait panes detail the processing waiting for other resources on the server. So let me go back to here now. So now if I actually expand this, we can go into a little more detail about the processor pane. And here you'll notice that these are all the processes that are running against the database. And if I right click this, right click this, and let me click this and say select statement and execute this. Oops, execute this. Then it should show up here. And uh, so now any processes that are running, whether they're SQL scripts or not, you'll be able to see them here. And obviously you're gonna start seeing the, the rise of batch requests being incre increased. You're going to see the database input output if it's being utilized, and then obviously the waiting task. And I'll be showing you these in a second. A couple of things to note here is that if I right click, um, right click here, uh, it allows me to have the three options. If I click on the details, it'll show me the scripts that are running in the background for that particular process. And the other thing is that if I hover over this, you get an explanation of what that particular tab does. This is the database. If I want to filter it, I can. So if I want to look at just SQL, I can here. If I right click again, let me look at this one of the couple of things I want to look at. And there's the script that I'm running. So you can see the actual script. Now, if that script was causing a tremendous amount of problems, because this may be the 100 million rows and I want to terminate it, I can what's called kill the process. And in order for me to kill the process, I right click and just go kill process. It'll ask you if you want to do it based on that SPID. Say yes, and that should terminate that. As you can see, it's uh, disconnected. So that's what that kill process does. Uh, so there's the uh, process is running here. And again, if you hover over this, you'll get some tool tips as to what kind of uh, uh, what kind of applications, what kind of tab this does here. Let's move on to the resource weight stats. And here again, you'll see that the different types of weight categories, this is basically giving you in the millionth of a second. And again, if you hover over this, it'll tell you what processes are waiting to be read or waiting to be processed in any times. And this is the millionth of a second. And so this has got the others, you've got cumulative wait time of uh, 0.333 of the network IOs and so on. So this will give you an indication of what processes are waiting to be processed. The database file I.O., if I expand that, 
It allows you to view all the uh, database uh, MDF and LDF files that are being uh, w uh, either read or written to and the response time that they're being accessed to. So I'll, you can certainly look at that and you've got all the uh, databases here. Uh, so that's a relatively easy kind of concept to understand. This is a g really good one also. Recent expensive queries. If I run that query again and go select do a select statement again and execute it. Then we should see that here in a second here. And obviously these are the things that are running in the background um, against that. So there's the process that I'm running. Here, if you go right click, you can edit and you can look at the query that we just executed. If you right click also, you can actually see the execution plan for that query. And since it does not have a index as we've talked about, it's gonna do a table scan. So it's gonna be a costly, uh, costly a query to execute and this is the most recent things and you can see again if i hover over it um what it's trying to do here so i'll let you read these kind of th things here just hover over it as you'll notice that there are um, system d uh, dmvs which are you'll see that when i re re go over it here it'll say um sys di uh, dime uh, exec query stats and those are those are DMVs which I'll be talking about later. So as you can see, is 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 allocating all the databases that are utilizing, and is it, and is monitoring all the most recent expenses. And this is a great tool to quickly get a snapshot of what's causing the the problem here. So now let's just kill that process and remember how to kill it. Just go to process here, right click, kill. Well, let me just make sure that's the right one. And that should do it actually. So I think that'll be it. I think it's still running, but we'll see in a second. And where is that process? And maybe we have to refresh it. So that's another thing we'll have to wait for if it's refreshing. So that'll give you an idea of how to use the um, uh, activity monitor. And basically, you're just looking for spike, spikes here, or uh, I should say plateaus, I'm sorry. And if you see a plateaus of any of these things, then you should be a concern. So again, um, this is a quick way for the allows the DBA to look at what is causing uh, issues. Let's just stop that manually. What is causing issues and take an address. And uh, when we get into the, uh, uh, when we get into this process right here, this is where you're going to learn a tremendous amount of mo how to monitor SQL with counters and events and so on. And I'm going to spend several videos dedicated to the performance monitor because that's a critical tool that we do utilize uh, to monitor our DBAs and take uh, action against it to prevent. But this one will give you a quick snapshot of what's going on. So since our server is not that busy, uh, it's not doing a tremendous amount of activity right here. So we're all, we're all, we're fine. And again, these are these are the processes that are running in the background, and that's fine also. And again, we can just kill these processes also if we need to, and that's how you kill it. So I think I'll just leave it here because I just wanted to introduce you to this um, uh, activity monitor, and its quick purpose is to quickly take a snapshot of what's going on in the server and give you a, uh, an idea. Now, sometimes I have this running. Uh, in the background, if I want to just if I know something is going to go, uh, going wrong, just to keep a an eye eye out or a quick eye, eyeball out for it if anything is going wrong. So I'll just leave it here and uh, we'll pick it up in the next one where we start discussing the a uh, little more detail in the SQL performance monitor. So I'll see you then. So my name is Raphael and this is how to become a production SQL database administrator. See you in the next video.